spiral. Mason is a bit of a recluse. He doesn't have a lot of friends, not very good social skills, and he depends a lot on his friend Berkeley. When you first meet Berkeley, he seems like kind of a jerk, like the first two scenes, but you do realize he really does care about Mason and he really does want to be a good friend to him. Mason paints, but he only paints girls. And one day he meets Amber and he starts painting her and they begin a gradual relationship. And that's really all I should be telling you about the plot other than that there is some secret that you'll discover. This is a psychological thriller. It really can't be called classified as a drama. And if you watch it as anything other than a psychological thriller, except maybe a drama, you will be disappointed. It is purely for that. One thing that the film does suffer from, though, and it's really the only big problem with it is that for the first while the secret, the twist, the, the hints dropped and the at least attempts at tension really seem to they, they come off as breaking up a perfectly good character drama the film doesn't feel like a thriller for, you know, the first long while. It just feels like a drama with a gradual pace. And it, it really does feel like it's you're being interrupted by these hints and the... these flashes of something that you don't quite understand at first. In fact, I would say the one thing keeping this from having too slow of a pace is actually Amber, portrayed by Amber Tamblin. Now, I can only speak for myself here, but this girl is just one of the cutest, perkiest, you fall in love with her 100%. And it's not because she's this image of the perfect girl. You know, it's not like you're sitting there thinking, wow, that girl is so much better than my girlfriend. She doesn't have any problems or anything. No, it's because she's real. She is perky and sweet like you wouldn't believe. But she does also have problems, and she has a real personality. It's just usually a really attractive personality. But, you know, you're not going to like every single thing she does, but she is real. She comes across as incredibly genuine. So you understand why Mason is so, you know why he can't help be attracted to her. And you also really feel for Mason. He clearly has some problems and you know, it, the film really brings out sympathy for him. And you can also kind of see where 
Berkeley is coming from. And it's not the university. Well, it might be. I don't know. He really does want to help his friend. They went to school together. It's more or less stated out, right? But he's also just tired because things aren't getting better. You know, Mason has always been like this. And it's been a lot of years. And Berkeley just really wants to see him do better, you know? I think that's the definition of truly caring for someone. It's... You know, you really want them to do well. Rather than just leaving them alone when they might be asking you to, but when they might actually be needing your help. The editing and photography is absolutely great. It's There's a couple of different methods. There's handheld. We get a lot of scenes that they can be a little awkward. They can feel like they they take a lot of time, sort of. But it really communicates the way Mason is with other people. You know, very awkward, and he doesn't really know what to say and how to say it, when to say it, you know, very anxious type. The music is mostly jazz and we get some philosophizing on jazz also. I'm not a fan of jazz at all and I would still say it fits pretty well. And that might be about what I can really say about the movie without getting into any spoilers. The acting is really, really good for everyone involved. There's a brief bit with this kid, and he doesn't say anything. He doesn't really do anything. You just see the look on his face. It doesn't last for very long, but clearly that kid can act. Also, Joe Moore, he was also an Avatar. There he didn't really get to do very much, because that movie really wasn't about characters. Here he really gets to show serious acting chops, and he apparently also helped like write and or direct it, so... He's got heaps of talent, evidently. I understand that, I think his name is Adam Green, who directed this, also directed a movie called Hatchet, and... Some people really like that. I haven't watched it. I can't really say if this is as good or... I think Hatchet is actually a horror movie, so it's probably not entirely the same. But yeah, all in all, if you like psychological thrillers, and you're okay with that it feels like it's taking longer than the less than 90 minutes that it is, it's like maybe 85 or... Actually, probably a little less than that. Then I would definitely say that it's worth at least watching, not necessarily owning. There's not a lot on the DVD, at least not the one I got. Basically, just a trailer for this, one for Psych 9 or something like that, and one for the Abysmal Mirror with. Lena Headey playing a strong woman, as she always does. One good thing about the DVD is that almost the first thing, I mean, you get a couple of, you know, warnings, you know, do not copy this DVD and all that, but then it says, thank you for buying this DVD, you know, that was it was nice of you to not pirate this. I think more DVDs should be doing this, because, you know, whenever a DVD, whenever you buy one of you actually bought something, and the first thing it tells you is you should really feel bad if you didn't buy this. Yeah, yeah, but I, but I did. I did buy it. You know, it's like a teacher of mine once pointed out to those of us who did show up on time that it really sucks that she has to be telling this to the people that did show up on time. But we, everybody, should really show up on time. You know, the people who show up late don't get that message because it, anyway. A 
an understanding of psychology is a must here, and if you don't think that you can sympathize with Mason, do not watch this movie. It will drive you up the wall. It's never done that for me on either of these two viewings, but I can imagine if you don't... I mean, I, I recognize Mason, I understand Mason, but if you can't see yourself understanding you know, this quiet type, you're gonna hate it. Because he is the lead character and everything is about him and these problems of his. Anyway, that was my spoiler-free review of Spyro. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.